guys and welcome back to my channel we are in a little bit of a different setup today i wanted to do more of a comfy cozy relaxed november wrap up so i'm not necessarily making this like an asmr video however i did want it to be a lot slower a lot calmer a lot more relaxed because that's typically what i like to watch so i wanted to make something similar to that for you guys so we are comfy in pajamas today with my microphone and some books that i read and that i started in november so we're just gonna get cozy we're gonna talk about those books and let's just jump right into it the first book i have here is half a soul by olivia atwater Half a Soul is a mix between a Regency era romance and fantasy. The fantasy element comes from the fact that there are fairies in this story. So our story follows our main character, Theodora, who goes by Dora. When she's a young girl, she is attacked by a fairy in the woods near her house. He claims that when her mother was alive, she sold her daughter's soul to this fairy and he is there to take it. Um, so he starts to extract her soul and her cousin comes and saves her and he is only able to take half of her soul meaning she doesn't have the ability to feel anger embarrassment guilt shame all of those dark feelings she isn't really attached to so we fast forward and she is now older her and her cousin are going to london for the London season. If you are unfamiliar with that term, that is in 1800s London area. That is basically the dating scene. So you would go to London and you would participate in the season. You go to balls and you court and you hopefully find yourself a spouse. So she is going with her cousin in the hopes that her cousin finds herself a rich man to marry and Dora can live with them. Dora has no intentions of marrying herself because she knows she is a bit of an outcast in the society. However, she does not expect to meet the Lord Sorcier, who learns of her condition and tells her that he would like to help her fix it. The Lord Sorcier has a very bad reputation himself among the society, so the two of them together is bound to lead to some scandals. The book took a really interesting turn and it really dove into a very interesting storyline that I really wasn't expecting. Um, it was smart, it was cleverly written, the characters were well fleshed out, and I loved it. I gave this a 4 out of 5. I actually just bought the second one in the series, so there are three books I believe in this trilogy. I think they're all different characters but set in the same universe. So if you were trying to get your hands on something that is a softer romance with a little bit of fantasy, this is a great pick. The next one I have is Invisible Girl by Lisa Jewell. As you all know, if you are around for a little bit, I am a big Lisa Jewell fan. I think everything she writes is just so well crafted and I can never guess it. And that is honestly one of the best feelings in the world when you're reading a thriller or a psychological suspense and you get to the end and you don't know what's going to happen. And that's pretty much what happens every time I pick up a Lisa Jewell book. So this one specifically follows a couple main characters, but the main story revolves around this young girl whose name is Sapphire. Sapphire went through some traumatic things as a child. Definitely check the trigger warnings for this before you pick it up. However, she goes through these traumatic things and she sees a therapist. The therapist is like a middle-aged man with a wife and kids. They see each other for quite a few years and she ends up graduating therapy um, a little prematurely. He believes that she is ready to be done. She doesn't feel ready, however, she kind of just lets it happen and she goes her separate ways. She kind of forms this fixation with him because he left her in a very vulnerable spot and she finds herself almost stalking his family. We find out once we get to the therapist's wife's perspective that Sapphire has gone missing right around the corner from where they live and it just dives into this very intricate multiple POV psychological suspense where we're trying to figure out what happened with Sapphire. I felt like the ending was really well tied up and it ended in a way where I was pretty satisfied. Like I actually really enjoyed it. It wasn't so much 
a thriller as it felt like just a psychological suspense and a lot of moving parts and a lot of character introspection and deep diving and I loved it. I gave this a four star. The next one we have is How Can I Help You by Laura Sims. I got this in one of my Aardvark book boxes and immediately the cover spoke to me. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's this library card set on fire. Um, so this follows our two main characters who are these two women working in a very quiet small town library and they are both very very interesting deep well fleshed out characters on the one hand we have this middle-aged woman who is running from a very dark past in the medical field she was a nurse in a hospital and as you slowly find out what she did that got her fired you start to realize who this person really is in comes the younger new librarian who has just moved to town and picked up a job here and she is completely fascinated by this woman and their paths start to cross and start to get entangled when a patron to the library dies in the bathroom and the new librarian catches the old librarian in a very odd position. This book is very much a book about obsession and characters and inner thoughts and kind of exploring like the darkest parts of our inner thoughts and like the darkest parts of our curiosities. It was very interesting. Um, I wasn't thrilled with the ending. I went into it, I guess, expecting it to be more of a thriller and it was definitely just more of like a character deep dive and like a creepy read. It was good. I didn't love it, but it was good. And if you're someone who's like super into characters and like creepy, weird things in like a very calm setting where it feels like very eerie, I would recommend this one. I gave it three stars. Next one we have is Hotel Magnifique by Emily J. Taylor. I picked this up at work the other day and I was just really, really in the mood for a YA fantasy. And that's exactly what I got. However, I didn't love it. So the main gist of this story is we are following two sisters who are orphans. They are very poor and they want to be able to pay to get back to their home village, which is a very long ways away. We're introduced to this magical hotel known as Hotel Magnifique, which is a hotel that moves locations. And by moves locations, I mean every morning the hotel is in a different city, a different country. And our main characters want more than anything to be guests at this hotel. However, they are poor orphans and they cannot afford to stay there. So they decide the next best option is to get jobs here and hope that the hotel ends up bringing them to their hometown so they can get back. The hotel's a lot darker and as we get further and further into the book we discover a lot of the secrets of the people who work there and the magicians that keep this hotel running, what keeps the hotel running and stuff like that. It was very interesting and I think the plot was very fun, however it really felt a bit too young of a writing style for me personally. The characters felt a little too rushed, I wasn't really rooting for any of them as much as I want it to be um and I think that's due to the disconnect between like the age group it's directed at and my age so I think that's kind of more of a me thing however it was a good read the plot's good I would give this a three star the next two I'm going to talk about are my cur my current reads the first one we have is when the stars go dark by Paula McLean so this is a psychological thriller that relies heavily on true crime and missing persons cases it has a lot of trauma theory and stuff like that so this is definitely a great read for people who are into true crime and detective work our story follows our main character who is a detective who is on leave after suffering a huge tragedy in her personal life she takes a leave of absence and returns to her hometown by herself the day she arrives there she learns that a local teenage girl has gone missing she feels this connection to a crime that happened when she was a teenager living in the town and the girl who was missing was never found and i think from what i'm understanding she feels this connection because it was never solved and she feels like it's almost her duty to solve it now so we're getting all of the elements of a true crime murder mystery i'm only about 100 pages in but so far i'm really liking it as you can tell, I'm very much into like my true crime era right now, like murder mysteries, thrillers, stuff like that. I think like 
as the seasons change. I don't know. I think like with the colder weather, it's just like fitting better and I'm enjoying it. So yeah, so far I'm really enjoying this one. And my other current read, surprise, surprise, is another Lisa Jewell. This is called Watching You, and this is a really interesting book so far. So this book is set in a very posh neighborhood in Bristol, England. We are following our main character who has just returned from being married overseas. She was working overseas for a couple months at this resort, and she ended up meeting her future husband there. They got married kind of like on a whim and then ended up coming back home because her mom died. So the two of them flew home together as newlyweds and they are now living with her brother and his wife all in the same house in this very expensive and rich town. She has a job working at this children's like bounce house kind of place. It's just very at odds with the place that she lives. So she's kind of stuck in the middle. She's in a very weird spot in her life you can tell and she's also very much second-guessing her marriage. We also have, living on the same street, the headmaster of a school who is this middle-aged man. We also are following the perspective of his son, who we learn is very into spy work. He wants to be a spy when he's older, and he takes it very seriously and begins spying on his neighbors. That's about all I've learned so far from this book. Um, it's really good. I say that about every Lisa Jewel book, so I mean, not much to say there. However, I'm really enjoying it, and it feels really perfect for like the cold, cozy weather. So, that is it for my November wrap up. I hope you guys liked this style video. It's a little bit different from what I'm used to, but it was fun for me to record it this way. It's like very cozy, comfy. I feel like I'm on FaceTime with you guys, which is my favorite kind of videos to record. So if you liked this, please give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more and I will see you guys next time.